All right, I've been really clear on this channel that we talk about football. Like, that's all we've done. We're just Lions guys. We talk football. We have a couple other channels. We talk football, and um, but we're Lions fans at heart, first and foremost. We're from the great state of Michigan, uh, but the Lions just got a surprise that nobody saw coming, and uh, I didn't have a chance to talk about it yesterday, but that's okay because more news continues to come out. More news continues to come out. So let's talk about this, and then let's talk about what it means for our team. Cam Sutton is wanted in a battery case, and police can't find him. On March 7th, there was an arrest warrant uh, issued, but the police were withholding the name. Um, there's evidence of wounds on the woman's body, and he was gone. All right, the Lions said yesterday, we became aware of the ongoing legal situation involving Cam Sutton this morning, the Lions said in a statement, we will continue to monitor the situation and will not have further comment at this time. It keeps going. All right. The, um, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office released this. Warrant, Wednesday, Cam Sutton, that's yesterday. That's our defensive back, all right? He is wanted for aggravated battery and domestic violence. He may be driving a Jeep Wagoneer with a plate number. If you have any information, call 813-247-8200, all right? Hey, if you have information, let's help find him. Why not? All right, this is nuts to me, but it keeps going. Ian Rappaport announced on Twitter, that the Lions have released cornerback Cam Sutton. Now, I don't know what this looks like, and um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the arrest or anything like that. This is very sad. Um, I struggle with this. Um, when you talk about football players, you're paying them to be violent. And then they uh, sometimes it happens outside of football where they're violent, and there's absolutely no excuse for it. Um, don't lay a hand on a woman. Don't do it. And so uh, respect, and you, you must. But we are going to shift over and talk about the football side of things for a minute. We're going to talk about his contract. We are going to talk about what the Lions can look toward now. Um, there's a lot of different things that I think we need to look at. So let's first look at the contract situation. Cam Sutton was due 12 million this year, 12.6 uh, to be almost exact, 12.68 million. If we were to release him, which it now says we did, we will owe him 5.1 million more than that. So if we go ahead and release Cam Sutton, which, by the way, all of you have been begging for, uh, get rid of him, get rid of him. Not all. I don't like using 100% words. Many of you have been begging for this total cap space number up here that's at $26.7 million will go down to a, about $21.6 million. So we will have less cap space. However it will free up a significant amount of money for us next year. Next year was going to be the out on Cam Sutton's contract. In fact, the cap number next year was going to be, in 2025, the dead money was going to be 6.54. Now, everything gets moved up a year. I think the void year, I don't know if it stays in 2026 or if that moves to 2025, so it might save us about $2 million next year and then another $4.3 million the year after that. Um, and then anyways, there's void years on this. So I'm not sure how those work with the release. I know void years, it's always, you can't move them, but if the release happens, do they move up a year? That's the only question. I don't know. Here's another question that I don't have the answer to, and I'm sorry. Um, and if I do find the answer to it, I absolutely will let you know when a player is released because he can no longer fulfill his contract or because he has been suspended by the NFL or because, I don't know, he's in jail. 
are you still needing to pay him the dead money? Is his contract now null and void? There's guaranteed money, but if he can't play or play out the services, do you still have to pay that? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I did some digging, but not enough to know uh, because I have things that I have to do today. Like, for example, watch basketball. It's March Madness. Why are you even watching this? Anyways, so those are all the things financially that we're going to talk about um, and that we have with Cam Sutton. But I also want to talk about where this team can go now. So we were just talking about the depth that we had at every position and how we can go into the draft and we don't have to worry about anything. We were four deep. We were four deep at um, starting caliber, or at least you can play them if you have to, caliber corners with Carlton Davis, Cam Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley. If his rehab goes well and he can get healthy, and Amik Robertson. Now we're down to three and maybe two. So what it looked like before is that Davis and Sutton were your starters. Robertson was the immediate backup, and you hoped Mosley would get healthy. And if he did, he probably jumps at least one, if not both, of Robertson and Sutton. All right? But now you have Davis and Robertson who are definitely going to be healthy enough, and then you hope Mosley's healthy enough to jump Robertson into the starting lineup. We still have Stephen Gilmore. We still have Khalil Dorsey. All right? Obviously, we still have Brian Branch at the nickelback as well. All of a sudden, as we go into the NFL draft, yes, we can still draft best player available, and we probably will. However, you need a corner. And so I don't know if um, if that's going to happen um, still. I don't know. Like, and so, like, I'm trying to find here uh, free agency rankings, cornerbacks. You know, I don't know who's left. And so it's it's not a ton left. Um, and so you, you look at this and you're just like, all right, well, I guess we're just going to sit here. Like, I, I've been looking at other stuff. Let's just say the names that are available aren't that great. You might throw a flyer on like a Xavier Howard, right? Who's an older player who you hope can kind of turn back the clock and uh, be a better player. I don't know what that's going to cost you. Um, there are people you can go out and get before, but then you kind of, you know, hamstring yourself with the salary cap and, and things like that. So you might want to do this during the draft, but corners are a hard position to develop. So, it, and it's the hardest to find. And so what the, the recipe for success with a corner is hopefully you let them adjust and adapt to the NFL game. And then you're playing them not like sparingly in year one. And then you're playing them more in year two and year three. Those are how good corners are developed. Um, outside of a few guys that are just like, oh, did not exceed, did not see that coming. They're really good. Um, so corners a tough position, uh, whether you're getting it through free agency or in the draft. But let's look and see what we can get, and we'll probably spend quite a bit of time looking at corners in the draft, uh, partially because of this move. All right, so weird stuff going on. Never expected this. Team's still in great shape. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you.